Today, we know Frank Lloyd Wright as one of the most influential American architects. But early in his career, he designed projects you might have trouble recognizing as his, even if you lived in the building. Jeffrey Baer is here with the story of one such Wright building that once stood on Chicago's south side in this week's Ask Jeffrey. Welcome back to the studio, Jeffrey. Good Look to have this. you here in person. You're not in a little box. I know. It's, you're actually a whole person. Socially distanced. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Um, okay, so this question comes from Gwendolyn Washington in Hyde Park. She asks, I grew up in the Francis Apartments in Bronzeville, an early project designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. What can you tell us about the building and its place in Wright's career? Well, as you alluded to, Brandis, um, our, our questioner, Gwendolyn, uh, when she was growing up in this building, which is located or was located at 43rd Street and Forestville Avenue in what is today Bronzeville, she had no idea it was designed by one of the world's most famous architects. And it's actually easy to see why. Um, it looks nothing like the low-slung geometric prairie style that Wright is known for, uh, nor his other famous buildings like this one, Unity Temple in Oak Park, or here's Falling Water in Pennsylvania. Doesn't look like any of those buildings. Um, and that's because the Francis Apartments again in Bronzeville, uh, were designed in 1895, which was very early in Wright's career, when his style was still more reminiscent of his one-time boss and mentor, Louis Sullivan. Now we of course know Sullivan, this is Sullivan's work now, um, for rejecting historical styles and pioneering the aesthetic modern soaring skyscraper with his famous adage, form follows function. Um, instead of pasting on Greek columns and Roman arches uh, to his buildings. Uh, Louis Sullivan, Wright's former boss, uh, developed a system of sinuous ornamentation inspired by organic natural forms as well as the building's structure. And so you can really see this play out in Frank Lloyd Wright's Francis Apartments. Um, let's take a look at the building's entranceway uh, here with its terracotta ornament weaving through the inner courtyard. Um, it's in conversation with the building's gates and other flourishes, and we're actually going to talk about more uh, of, of that in a minute. Um, and if you look closely at the inter connecting circles and lines, wow, it feels strikingly close to something that Louis Sullivan, his former boss, would have done, um, say in Louis Sullivan's Carson Peary Scott department store in the Loop, uh, or even in Sullivan's last commission, which was the Krauss Music Store, which is still standing in Lincoln Square. Uh, now, Frank Lloyd Wright's four-story Francis apartment building, now gone, um, was built as uh, middle-income housing with apartments on the upper floors and retail space there along 43rd Street. Over the years, um, the Francis apartments sadly deteriorated, and uh, as I said, they were eventually torn down, really, without much protest or fanfare, and that happened in 1971. Now, Wright and Sullivan are both titans, we know, of yes. modern architecture, but they had a, a complicated relationship. Uh, complicated would be an understatement, I think, <laughs> Brandis. Uh, Wright joined Sullivan's firm, which was called Adler and Sullivan, in 1888, and he worked as a draftsman on one of the firm's most famous projects, the Auditorium Building in downtown Chicago. Um, they would work together for the next five years until Wright started moonlighting, designing houses for his own clients to make extra cash. Now this was a total violation of his contract with Sullivan and Sullivan furiously fired him and that led to bad blood between the two that lasted until near the end of Sullivan's life when eventually they did reconcile. Now, Wright and Sullivan did collaborate on several very influential projects during their professional relationship. That's, they, these include the notable uh, Charnley Persky House, which still stands in the Gold Coast neighborhood. It's now the home of the Society of Architectural Historians. Um, Sullivan and Adler were the architects of record on that building at home. Um, but the Society tells us that Wright really oversaw many of the details, uh, likely including these balusters on the second floor, which really feel like a sort of a force shadowing of Wright's mature style. And Jeffrey, is there anything left of the Francis Apartments today? Unfortunately, not much. Um, uh, the site is now home to a series of contemporary townhouses, which is part of a larger wave of construction, new construction in Bronzeville. Uh, a few remnants from the building are now housed at the Art Institute, including this gate from the original entranceway, as well as this intricate ventilator grill that Wright designed um, for the building. Uh, but, but if you really want to see a rare surviving example of Wright's early Sullivan-esque work, 
You just have to go about a mile and a half north of the site of the former uh, project we were talking about, and you'll go to the, you'll get to the Rollison Row houses on Calumet Avenue near 32nd Street. Notice the Sullivan-esque ornamentation on the front. Uh, Wright did the remodeling job on these townhomes in 1894, a year before he designed Francis Apartments, and that was just a year after Sullivan booted him out. Um, so it sort of right before he was right. <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> uh, and yes, and the interiors of, of the Rollison homes were destroyed by fire in 1981, but the original facades remain, and they are a Chicago landmark. Always fun, Jeffrey Bayer. Good to have you here Great in the flesh. Great to be here, yes. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jeffrey. And don't forget that you can visit our website for more details about the Francis Apartments. And while you're there, don't forget to submit your own question to Jeffrey Bayer. That's at wttw.com slash askjeffrey.